everyone, welcome to A-Level Government and Politics. My name is Miss Mears and I'll be one of your two politics teachers next year. We're going to start with why government and politics is such an important and interesting subject to study. Firstly, it gives more of an understanding of the world we live in and the political system that governs our country. It also gives people the opportunity to gain more of an insight into how our political system works. Some people enter the course already having an in-depth knowledge of politics. Others enter the course knowing very little, but by the end of two years, all of you will have developed your understanding and your own views. Finally, studying government and politics allows you to grow more as a person, as it allows you to explore what you believe in, what party you would affiliate to, and what potential changes you think need to be made to our current system. We spoke to some of our current year 12s and this is what they had to say about studying the course. So one said, I love politics. It's a personal passion. I think anyone who has opinions about the world of politics and government should do the course as it might educate you. If you have an interest in current affairs, the course will be for you. This is because politics is constantly changing So keeping up to date with current affairs means that the actual course itself is always changing as well, making it a more interesting topic overall to study. Another student said, politics is the study of people and run by people. The subject was so appealing for me as it allows you to understand the relationships between the most powerful people in the world and what better way to improve our own personal and social lives by being educated in knowing about the most powerful people that run our countries. Ultimately, politics is not just about governments though, it is also the foundations for most debates and discussions that we have with our families and friends. It just shows again how politics is changing all the time and that it is around us all the time. Most of the politics students realise that after studying it, how much of their everyday lives is based around politics and it's not just on the six o'clock news, but it's all around them all the time. And studying government and politics gave them the tools to engage with that more fully. With regards to what you will study over the two years, the course is split into three. So to start with, you've got component one, UK politics and core ideologies. Here you look at democracy and participation. So this is looking at our current system of democracy. So um, how this has changed over time to think of suffragettes here, different pressure groups and how they influence government and the rights of the people. You also look at the political parties. So you look at the Conservatives and Labour mainly, but you do also look at the smaller parties in depth. We also look at how these parties are funded and what their ultimate roles are and whether they achieve this or whether this needs to be changed. You then look at the electoral system in this country. So how people vote, how people come to power and whether or not this is the best system to have. Within that, you also look at the use of referendums obviously the main one being Brexit here, and the impact that this has on the country overall. You then look at voting behaviour and the media. So this is looking at who votes for what party. So we try and see if there are any trends. So whether one particular gender vote for one particular party, whether age is a factor, etc. You also look at the influence of the media and how it impacts people's voter decisions. This becomes especially prevalent when we look at young people and social media and how that has changed how elections and the outcome of elections. You then look at three ideologies. You look at conservatism, which is based on traditions. And so you look at what a conservative thinker might um, think about the economy, about human nature, etc. And how that might influence their political decisions. Look at liberalism, which is this based on individualism and freedom and how that would impact their political decisions. And then you look at socialism, which is an opposition to capitalism, providing an alternative that is more humane and collective. So how would they change the government, etc. So that's all unit one. You've then got unit two, which is the UK government and non-core ideologies. So to start with, you look at the constitution, so the laws of this country. So we look at what is in the constitution, but also how the constitution has changed over time and whether it needs more changes. Again, Brexit plays quite a large part here. You look at parliament itself. So you look at the functions of parliament. You individually look at the House of Commons and the House of Lords, whether they fulfill their functions. 
You also here look at how much power Parliament has and whether that needs to be changed. You've got the Prime Minister and the Executive. So you do a case study into all of the Prime Ministers since, since Thatcher and um, why they were able to dominate Parliament or not. You then look at relations between institutions. So the two institutions you look at are the Supreme Court and the EU, obviously the EU being the one that's changing the most. And then finally, you look at feminism. So we look at how a feminist would think that the country should be run and how this would influence their political decisions. So there's unit two. They are your two UK units for government and politics. Your final unit, so government and politics of the USA, you're looking at very similar topics, except all for America. So you start with the US Constitution and federalism, so seeing how their constitution differs to ours, how federalism works to help each state can govern itself. You look at Congress, so the role of Congress, how Congress is split up and the powers that they have. You look at the US presidency, so again, you'll do case studies into various different prime ministers and seeing whether they fulfill their roles, whether or not they were good presidents, etc. You look at the Supreme Court and civil rights, again, seeing how that differs from the UK Supreme Court and how rights have changed over time. You then look at US democracy and participation. So you look at the electoral system of the US, so how would a president come to power? We look at the two main parties in detail and what they believe, and also look at who participates in voting for the next president and any trends that happen there. So whether a gender would vote for one party, again, age, whether that plays a factor. And then finally, you look, compare all of that to the UK. So that third unit is a comparative unit. So you compare all of US politics to all of UK politics. So in terms of how you are assessed, each unit is one exam paper and each paper is given complete equal weighting. So not one is more important than the other. Each exam you sit will be two hours long with 84 marks in each exam. In terms of the question styles you can get, you can get essay mark, essay questions, so 30 mark essay questions. You can get 30 mark source questions and they're both for all three papers. You get 24 mark essay questions, which are just for the political ideologies and then 12 mark comparative questions, just looking at how the UK and the US compare. In order to do well, there are three things you need to do. So first of all, you need to show knowledge of political institutions and processes. So just show that you have the knowledge of what's going on. You need to be able to analyse these um, different, sorry, you need to be able to analyse these political institutions and processes and then you need to be able to come to a conclusion about what you think of all of these different aspects. So whether or not you think the president has too much power or you think the electoral system needs to change, etc. In order to really achieve the high levels in government and politics, you need to stay up to date with current affairs. So what we do is we do what's called a news review every two weeks. So you'll be split into groups and then each fortnight one of the groups will get up and they will present seven news stories from the past two weeks, a range of US and UK stories. This has become a bit of a competition so afterwards um, we rank each other's presentations and then at the end of the term once everybody has presented the winners get a prize. Also each week or each fortnight um, the presenting group tend to bring in sweets and prizes and do kind of quizzes and games throughout their presentation. So it really mixes up the lesson style. In terms of the different lesson styles, obviously government and politics lends itself to quite a lot of debates. Um, so we try and do that as much as we can, as well as a mixture of um, exam based lessons as well. So you get quite a nice wide variety. To do well, then you need to be organised. As you have seen, there are quite a few topics within government and politics, and so you will need a folder with dividers um, for each topic. These are checked regularly by your class teachers as well. You need to be supportive, so you'll spend a lot of time with your class and you need to be able to encourage each other to do well and help each other out. You'll learn quite a lot from each other as well as from me this year. 
you need to be quite independent though. So very different to GCSE. There is a focus on you working independently and you going out and finding information. So I will obviously give you what I can, but you do need to add to that. And then you need to stay engaged. So again, staying up to date with current affairs. Don't just wait until it's your turn to do a news review, but by watching the news every night or having news apps on your phone or following um, news accounts on Instagram, etc., you'll be able to keep up fairly easily. So your summer tasks for September, you've got four tasks that you need to complete and I will be taking in these tasks the first week back and marking them. So please do not be late in handing them in. The first thing you need to do then is an in-depth study of an election and there are eight questions on there that you need to answer about that election. You then need to have a look at the EU referendum and again there are a couple of questions there you need to answer. As I've said Brexit forms the basis of quite a lot of our discussion um, within politics. Then you need to research four controversial news stories. These are both from the UK and the US. I would say don't go back further than five years, try and keep them fairly recent, but these can be, you know, Trump winning the election, Brexit, etc. And then finally, you need to have a look at the rise and fall of a UKIP. So how a party can rise to power and then why it fell. As I said, I will be taking these in the first week back, so please make sure they're done. Also, don't just copy and paste off of Google and Wikipedia. Put them into your own words as it will just help with your overall understanding. I've also included some quizzes here that you could have a go at. So these are just to see which party you should vote for or where you would lie on the political spectrum. These aren't compulsory. I have also included a grid of documentaries that you could watch over the summer. So if you find yourself bored at any point with nothing to do, have a look at some of these. So variety here on kind of Netflix or BBC. Um, and it also tells you which part of the course they would be useful with as well. So just a bit of a helpful, sorry, just something to keep you going over the summer to get you ready for September. So I look forward to meeting you all and hope you all have a lovely summer.